It's time for the Giz Whiz with Mads Mattis writer Dick Bartolo. This is episode 1018, recorded Thursday, January 12th, 2023. P.U. I'm back from Vegas, so we're going to be taking a look at four gadgets from CES, and we'll also be taking a look back in time to see if Kodak actually pulled off their gadget from five years ago. All next on The Giz It's the same show with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. Now! Now! And here he is, our biggest winner, Dick D. Bartolo. You won the jackpot. Uh, you couldn't uh, lose. I, really. I'm a winner because I didn't go to Vegas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only way to win in Vegas is to not actually gamble. Yeah, uh, no, exactly. I, I remember I was going to Vegas once, and it was like an unbelievable conversation. This young girl was talking to a woman next to her, and the woman, the older woman said, and, and why are you going to Vegas? She said, um, I only have enough money for half my college tuition and I thought, I'm going to go to Vegas and see, I'm either going to not go to college oh at all gosh. or win enough to get enough money to go to college. And I'm thinking, what? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I only have exactly. enough for two years, so let's just <laughs> put it on the line. Put it all on black, you know? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Unbelievable. That's bad. Anyway, <laughs> so, yeah, it's bad. What, was it super? Was it crowded? Was it? It was definitely very different from last year, 2022, uh, um, is, you know, last year there was kind of like confusion on if it was still okay to go or not, and lots of reporters pulled out and companies pulled out and everything, and that wasn't the case this year. So much bigger, finally the West Hall, you know, was fully open and oh, absolutely okay. everything was in there. Which means that the South Hall, empty as can be. The South Hall is where we used to have Twit. Twit's big old stage was in there. It's a two two story hall, massive, and um, I kind of got used to entering at the South Hall. That was kind of just how I started my CES. I went there this year, uh, and uh, they they were doing some other stuff in there, but nothing related to booths or showcasing at all. And oh all of that gosh. has moved to the West Hall. So now it really starts with the Central Hall, the North Hall, and then you move to the West Hall. Um, but everything that was in there, just as big as ever, just as massive. It was a lot of fun to uh, see CES again. You know, the, the full-scale <laughs> booths, the massive things that are in there. Um, very, very And very how is fun. the tunnel between the two places? So I decided not to ride it this year because I did it last year. There was a line. There's definitely a line to go okay. through the tunnel. Also, there is now uh, the tunnel connects to Resorts World. So it doesn't just do, it doesn't technically connect, oh. actually. It's very strange. Is that you have the West Hall station, you go up to the surface, and then you have to walk about a city block. And then you can go down into the Resorts World <laughs> uh, loop. Oh, and see. also that Resorts World loop cost money. They're, they sell tickets to go on it, oh, which I oh, guess makes okay. sense. You know, the monorail cost tickets and everything. It's just that the I didn't think of it because the stops between the convention center don't have a cost. Um, and, you know, those are just basically for the use of the convention. So... Those don't have a cost, but anything else uh, does, which I guess makes sense. I didn't <laughs> didn't think yeah. they would. Well, in Vegas, for it. anything else costs. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, even the monorail was for the for the week. It was a forty four dollar a ticket monorail. Uh, you know, and we had two people. So. Um, yeah. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, that that no. was up and running uh, still. Let me think if there was anything else that was. Uh, they published really the final number at 115,000, I believe, attendees. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, That's they're expecting 100,000. 
but wow, fifteen thousand are all like you. They just go and they sign up. <laughs> they do. Still no <laughs> issues, <laughs> by the way. No, it's great. None. Um, no, it's great. Uh, still none. I the lady this year though was like, oh, this is the first time I'm doing this, so let's learn together. Type type oh, type. Oh, okay. Oh, that's like, good. Oh my gosh. Maybe I should just pre-register next year. Just get it over with. Um, but yeah, CES Unveiled. So uh, the events that I went to were CES Unveiled, uh, Pepcom, and Showstoppers. And uh, we got lots of gadgets, saw lots and lots of stuff. It was a ton of fun. Um, and then, of course, the CES show. But those press events are so perfect because you have the exact people you need to talk to. Um, you, you, you're talking to the PR people or the inventor or the founder right there at a very easy to manage location. And so I didn't get any footage from actual CES. I just all from uh, these events. No, absolutely. And, and Pepcom uh, broadcast there. So it yes. was great. Yes. I, I, I yeah. watched all three and a half hours of it and a ton of stuff went by. So it was great. It was perfect. great. Perfect, perfect. Um, uh, one thing that uh, I, lo I love to update you on is uh, the food. <laughs> I feel like that's always a fun yes, thing yes, to yes. chat about. Was it not good? It was good. It was okay. I, it it depends. It defi it's funny because it does depend on the event. Is CS Unveiled the worst, the absolute worst option uh, when it comes to uh, catching dinner uh, that night? And then um, Pepcom Digital Experiences always, they take a different take on the event where they do theme it. Every year there's a theme. It's been yes. football, it's been, you know, there's all these, this year I think it was uh, like uh, the 20s, like the roaring 20s. Oh, like, it was, yes, it um, was. And so they always have that type of theme and they do big stuff with ice sculptures and they do, they kind of go crazy on the theming. Um, and I feel like some of the food budget is put into theming budget. So the food's good. <laughs> the food is very good. Okay. Uh, okay. But Pepcom, oh, sorry, but uh, uh, Showstoppers is really the best. And I took some footage of, oh, great. of uh, you know, what Showstoppers food was. So here they had, this was a, a station, and that is a donut filled with ice cream that they heat up. And so the outside of the donut is warm and the inside is ice cream. This is some of the food. This is the best food uh, that they offer the press. I always feel like they think that the press will write better reviews about their... Yeah. <laughs> also, <laughs> uh, it's nice to see that for a long time, everything was just in little boxes. Yes, yes, that so is. So most everything was cold. Now yes. it's great to see they had hot food. Yeah, so that's back, that's back. So that's an idea of how they try to wine and dine the press <laughs> into... And what uh, hotel is that? That one there is the Bellagio, which was oh, new yeah. uh, this year, because uh, that's nice. normally in the win is where uh, Showstoppers is. Um, oh my gosh, the most embarrassing. I, was, I feel like I should save this until next week, because we've already done quite a lot of talking. But I do have a pretty embarrassing story about showstoppers it might be the most i, I think i'll do it. i've i've teased it enough so the this year the showstoppers was in bellagio which was different it's always in the win and you kind of really get to know the hotels and where you know i mentioned this yes, in the past yep. episode. you know where to park you know where to enter so this was a new year because new hotel and boy was exactly what happens every other time you go to a new place i went down the wrong you know, hallway for about 20 minutes, turn around. They have their ballroom up escalators, down escalators, around halls. I mean, I was thoroughly lost by the time that I felt like I was getting close to the entrance of Showstoppers. Big sign, big arrow, Showstoppers, this way. I appreciate it, I can follow that sign. So I turn the corner and there is the sign up. There's the, the uh, area that you sign in and get your badge. And this year they had done another thing different, which is that you didn't need to bring, normally you need to show your ID and show a business card and also have already pre-registered and that's your credentials to get in. This year, there's another change, not only just the location, but that you could show a QR code and they would scan your QR code oh, and you didn't need nice. to show the other stuff. So I'm really thinking in my head, man, a lot of stuff has changed this year with Showstoppers. Turn the corner, get in the line, 
And everybody, instead of, you know, I'm expecting scanners or something for the QR code, everybody has these books of names. I'm thinking, this was their backup. The QR codes didn't work. They tried to figure it out. QR codes didn't work. So everyone, so I walk up to the first person that I see and I just give her my name and, and you know, say the Gizwiz. She goes, I can't find you. I said, well, I have the email right here. And she goes, well, uh, okay, that's okay. Here, just take these. And I look at them and they're drink tickets. And she goes, and you can just head on in. <laughs> I was like, strange. So first, I didn't get a badge. And second, I've never gotten drink tickets at one of these no, events before. No, usually it's just I, open bar. Normally it's just open hey, bar. Hey, we're the press. Exactly, exactly. It's, they're trying to make you feel as good as possible. You know, get, get a little bit of uh, liquid courage and maybe you'll write better reviews. So I'm like, okay, interesting. And I go in and look at the first booth and it is like a business to business hardware solution for self-driving cars. I'm like, ugh, not a good one. Go to the next one, similar thing. And I start going down, up and down the lines and every single booth is just horrible. And I'm starting to freak out because I'm thinking I have to record at least four videos. Otherwise, we won't have enough videos to get through the month. And there, every booth is just absolute trash. It's just horrible. And, I'm, and Josh finally goes, do you think we're at the wrong event? And now we can't figure out if we're at the right event or not because it's just a generic ballroom. So we start walking around the whole event. Finally, we find a sign at the beginning. There's a welcome CI something something members. And we're like, this is the wrong event. And I have never been more embarrassed. So we, oh we finally got out of that ballroom. Sure enough, on the other side of the hallway, instead of having the check-in area in the hall, which is normally how they did it, you would enter the ballroom and have the check-in inside the ballroom. So it was just a door. I just missed the oh, door. There was just I an open see. door that I needed to walk through to get to uh, to get to Showstoppers. And and <laughs> finally, I was there. I was like, I still have these drink tickets for the event across the hall. Um, anyway, it was just so 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 embarrassing. Um, to uh, walk into the wrong event and already be, be well. criticizing them. Anyway, <laughs> luckily there was no one to witness my shame except for oh, okay. us sharing uh, right now. Oh, so. Okay. so there we go. So anyway, that was my <laughs> showstoppers um, story. Well, we got lots and lots of gadgets. Okay. And how the this month works, how the month of January uh, works is... Uh, We'll, we'll cover four gadgets an episode, and then we'll go back and look at a previous gadget um, from a, a previous CES as our warehouse. So that's what you have to look forward Correct. to for the rest Correcto. of the month. Okay, should I take the lead on this, um, yes, this yes, first yes. gadget? Yes, yes, yes. The so first four are yours. Yeah, I guess so. The first gadget, uh, Dick, you were like, I, I have to see this. This looks insane. It is a electric boat um, and I recorded a video about it. Quick note about the videos is the cable that I was using would kind of go in and out. I did an audio test and I didn't hear it but apparently it was it was like a short in it when I move it. You should be able to understand everything I say but I'm sorry the audio is a bit annoying uh, to listen to uh, but it doesn't last the entire time so uh, keep that in mind. Okay. okay here's the video. Here we are at Pepcom in Las Vegas and I'm looking at a boat that seems to be floating on air. What am I looking at here? You're looking at Candela C8, the first electric hydrofoiling boat. Electric and wow, okay, so what technology goes into creating something like this? Yeah, so um, this is basically an aircraft in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to look like a boat, uh, but it flies on, on computer-stabilized wings that fly underneath the surface of the water. So, and by, by lifting up the uh, boat above the, the friction of water, we uh, uh, reduce the energy consumption by about 80%, and that makes uh, electric uh, boating uh, possible. So you have long range at high speeds. That is incredible. And would this be a recreational vehicle or more? Is something you would like bring along with a bigger boat as a dinghy? Now this is a recreational vehicle in, in itself, in its own right. So uh, we have uh, 150 orders for this boat already before we showed it, and uh, then we also have a ferry coming uh, using the same concept of electric hydrofoiling, which will be coming online uh, later this year. 
And then uh, about how long can, or how far can an electric uh, go? Yeah. So this boat has the longest range, as I said, and it has a range of, of 57 miles on one charge at 20 knots. And bear in mind, that's not as much as a car, but it's still three times longer than any other electric fast boat on the market. Fantastic. Uh, what uh, is the price and uh, like availability? When will this be coming up? So if you order now, you get it in 2024. So we have kind of a, a big uh, order stock. Uh, and the price is uh, it's, uh, $390,000. And that's, uh, that's uh, on par with a, a fossil fuel boat in the premium category. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and then where can people find out more if they want to, uh, to maybe order one or learn more information? Go to candela.com. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Okie dokie. So an electric boat that yes. uses now, hydro Yes. Now I know like Scooter is saying hydrofoils are not new. So this is the all no. totally electric hydrofoil. The hydrofoils, the engine. Um, and I, I sent you a link to the, first of all, the boat is 100% uh, carbon fiber. And I, I sent you a link yeah. to their accessories. The interior of this, it seats, first of all, it's deceptive. It's a 28 foot boat. It seats eight. You can have it built with a cabin that sleeps four. Um, you can have a dinette. You can have pretty much anything. There's, there's a, a, a one with a hard top that slides across. I think that one is four hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. One of them has a, a head, a toilet, fold down transom. There's a that's a really nice sleeping area. So it certainly is a top of the line boat and top of the line pricing. So the hydrofoil is. It sounded like to keep this boat as efficient as possible. That is correct. And, and so the carbon fiber to make the hull very light. Okay, okay. So I was I guess I'm wondering like if it's so effective at reducing you know uh, cost of the engine to run, why right. why aren't more boats hydrofoils? Is it just so expensive to figure out how to Well, you know what there's a ton more engineering in this in that when you want to trailer it, which you could, you have to have those hydrofoils retract into the hull. Right. right. And also, if you want to run the boat in shallow water, you oh, yeah. can <laughs> set it up so it can become just a regular uh, boat. I mean... You sort of defeat the purposes because they're reducing the friction by 80% by levitating you over the water. Um, so th there's a lot of engineering in this boat, but it is it is pricey, but uh, it's a beautiful interior. And you can't tell from those photos that it, that it is a 28-foot boat. And uh, 20 knots, I believe they said 57 um, nautical miles of 57 miles. And, the, and also they, in Sweden, that's, they're based in Sweden, uh, coming online, I believe in the summer is going to be this company's first ferry boat that they built for the city of Stockholm using so, hydrofoil. That seems like a, a good market to be in is I think that where a lot of these boats will succeed is people who do want the reduced cost of fuel. Kind of like yes. with an electric car is if you can get something to be electric, well now your price of gas is so low. So ferry boat makes the most sense. That seems yeah. like perfect. Is uh, also I assume that a hydrofoil ride across water is way more smooth than a, with well, all the friction. Uh, absolutely, you're you're, th I think uh, three or three and a half feet above the waves, so you just have a smooth ride, and no sound. There's no right. engine making noise. So yeah, yeah. It, it, gosh, it, that's got to yeah, be incredible. Pretty neat. I could really see <laughs> the ferry taking off as a commercial vehicle. That seems like 
Yes, I do too. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I've taken a couple of hydrofoils here, uh, but they are pretty loud because you're moving uh, the uh, C streak, I think it is, takes yeah. two or 300 people yeah. um, uh, up on fins, but it's a lot of thousands of horsepower to get that thing up. And I think that's what uh, electric motors are actually very good at. They're great at going at having horsepower and torque. Yes. Because yes. of just the nature of electric motors, you don't need you don't need them to be spinning for them to already be able to have a, a lot of torque. Um, and so I guess getting up out of the water is very simple for a electric motor. Uh, Dave C does make a amazing point, which is that Stockholm in Sweden uh, are islands. In fact, I when I have, I've been there twice. Oh, that's interesting. The only time I've ever seen water taxis, like actual taxis for the water, <laughs> because there are so many islands and it's just all this archipelago of, of uh, different land masses. And so this actually makes tons of sense if you are constantly running your boat around and fuel is a uh, big determining factor of costs. It's, it's yeah, absolutely, really cool. absolutely. Candela, very, Candela. very cool. Pretty uh, neat. Okie dokie, so the uh, next gadget, we are going to the Ampere booth. Uh, we looked at two things from a Ampere, and uh, the first one is possibly for people who have young children or people who like to rock out in the shower. Uh, this is just one of, one of those two categories. Uh, so let's check out the video. We're at Showstoppers in Las Vegas, and you know what? I always get bored when I'm in the shower. I need some stuff to keep my mind entertained. These look like something that would really, you know, I, I just feel like I need this in my life. Every time I shower, I need some buddies to keep me company. Uh, so <laughs> tell me, Chase, what are we looking at? You are looking at Shower Power Buddies. Uh, in 2020, we launched Shower Power. So this is a hydropower shower speaker. This top part is a hydroelectric generator. So this uh, provides all of the power just using the water that you're already using in the shower for a Bluetooth speaker. We got so much feedback from our customers that they like to use this as a way to get their kids to shower. So there's this kind of age between four and eight when kids are done using baths, but they don't like showers. So how can we make a shower more fun? So we use that feedback to create Shower Power Buddies. All of that functionality is now built into the shower head. So you've got two uh, three watt speakers, plus the battery, plus LED lights, all designed for kids. And so the final little uh, coup de gras is this cover. And so we have three fun uh, characters, all water inspired, to help kids uh, have some company like you in the shower, you know? That's some, fantastic. Someone who doesn't want to, you know, go and take their first shower alone, like a little bit nervous about switching from the bath to the shower. There's all these fun bath toys. They even say that rubber duckies are for baths. Not anymore. Now we have a rubber ducky for the shower. I could also just imagine, you know, I don't even have to like remember lullabies or like shower time songs. Like you just play them on the speaker, you know, add some fun to the, to the situation. Of course. And there's some other fun feature, features like that, you know, teaching kids about uh, water usage. Okay. You have one song um, or about water temperature. So this LED will change according to the water temperature. And so if it's flashing red, that's too hot. Be careful. If it's dark blue, that's too cold. So let's wait for it to get to green. That's just right for you to get in. That's fantastic. And I'm, I must say that it, this seems very sleek. I like how it's all connected into the shower head. That's a very, very, very sleek yeah, design. This is, this is essentially the same size as your average shower head. And if you're an adult who's using the shower, you can have it mounted higher and then have an additional bracket that's the appropriate height for your child. And then when it's time for them to go in, you can swap in and add on that buddy. So, you know, make it a little bit more fun. That's great. Uh, what is uh, MSRP and when will this be available? So we're looking in somewhere around $100 to $150. Um, it'll depend a little bit on the final buddies that we go with and some of this final uh, functionality. This is a 100% functional product right now. Um, as you can see, my niece has used this uh, quite extensively. She is our, uh, our head product tester. Um, so she gave us some good actionable feedback that we're going to incorporate into the final product. Uh, but we're here at CES, um, you know, talking to potential buyers and seeing about wh where we want to put this in, like what channels we can buy it in. Um, and so you can expect to see it in the first half of this year, um, exactly when that will launch to be determined, but you can expect to see it within the next few months. Awesome. And uh, where can people find out more? Um, at the ampere.shop website, A-M-P-E-R-E dot S-H-O-P. We have our entire product line, including some information about Shower Power Buddies. 
Thank you so much. Okie dokie. <laughs> I ended that one fast. Uh, I wasn't ready. Uh, Ampere uh, doesn't have the buddies available yet, but the original shower power uh, is up on their website, so you can find out more. I, I and I don't see shower power disco that they had. <laughs> a Was couple that a thing? Of, yes, <laughs> shower power disco. Um, about three years ago. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's the pro okay. version, oh. apparently. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> exactly. great. To be honest, I feel like the shower head that he showed off is uh, more sleek than, than these. I like that the shower head is built in to everything, so there isn't one thing that's the charger and one thing that is the uh, speaker, because that seems super duper bulky. I really, I almost want them to make just a black or white version that doesn't oh, come with I a buddy. See, yes. You know, yeah. I just sell that because um, I don't necessarily love how much the generator and the speaker add, but when it was all together in one device, it seemed a lot sleeker um, and something that adults would like, even though it was a product made for, for kids. Um, so anyway, there you are, Shower Power Pretty Buddies. Shower Power. I could definitely yeah, yeah, they see. They make a lot of stuff. I think they made a... Uh... A phone, one of those phone boxes that you put your phone in and it cleans it and oh, sanitizes yeah. it. Yeah, I didn't realize they had so many products. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to cover another product uh, here in just a second. Oh, oh okay. But okay. a lot of their products are kind of all over the place. Uh, they got yes. chargers, they got <laughs> all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, we're, we are going to take a look right now, actually, at uh, another product by Ampere. Oh, We're good. here at Showstoppers in Las Vegas, and Chase, you look a little bit familiar. I may have seen you before. We may have met before. It might have been, it was a long time ago. Um, may have been around Buddy Shower, but I don't know. Anyway, totally different product. What are we looking at here? So, you know, our brand is Ampere. We make fun, functional tech. Everything that we want to make, it's something that's, you know, innovative and interesting. It's our own custom products, completely unique on the market, but also genuinely useful. So we try to focus on things you use every day, like the shower, your sunglasses, your chargers. So we have a, a wide product line. Um, and these electrochromic smart sunglasses called Dusk are our smart sunglasses offering. Okay, so what do they do? Can I put them on maybe even? Okay, so we'll set these on my face. And they look nice. They're actually really light. Yeah, they're very light. Really good. Very comfortable. Okay, so I got them on. And I'm thinking, man, it's a little bright in here. We can actually make these glasses darker from the push of a button in the app. That's incredible. Yeah, so you can choose uh, you know, a dark tint, uh, a light tint, or anywhere in between by using the Dusk app. And so what's completely unique about these are there are transitions glasses that react to the sunlight. Those are called photochromic glasses. These are electrochromic. So by changing the current that's going through the lens, you can actually change that tint level instantaneously. That, how many steps of tint are there? Like um, for this one, we tried to do exactly one per percent. And so this is 38 to 4. And so you can go fall anywhere on that 38 to 4. That's um, really cool. Uh, four levels pre-programmed onto the frame. So if you hit that button there on the left side, you can change it yourself and toggle between four different tint levels. But it's great so I don't have to whip out my phone every time. Yeah. Exactly. But if you use the app, then you can customize exactly what you want. Um, however, what we found is, you know, people love the app, but like you said, it's not always convenient to take it out and to adjust it. So we just launched a new product that incorporates some of these features that, you know, we heard from people that they want to see in the next pro Dusk product. And one of those is an ambient light sensor. So if you hold that one up there, Chad. This is one of our new Dusk Sport frames. So we have two new Dusk Sport frames. And that has an ambient light sensor at the top. And so that ambient light sensor allows you to customize your tint changing experience without having to do it manually. So you can just set on the app that you'd like to have it be more sensitive to light or less sensitive to light, uh, transition faster or slower, um, and even the spectrum that you want it to, to you know, tint change between. That is really, really cool. And there's even a feature that I know that some of these glasses have that you haven't, in, uh, haven't even talked about is that they're Bluetooth connected so they can play music on a few of the models. 
Yeah, of course. So uh, the, that earlier model that you were wearing, we call that our base uh, audio version. And so that's got small speakers and microphones. It's designed to look like a pair of ordinary sunglasses. These are designed to be premium audio. So this is a you know, high-end audio. If you like to listen to music, this is a great option. That's great. And there was one more feature that I heard called Huddle. Tell me about Huddle. Huddle mode. Um, so essentially, you can use the app to create a channel. And as long as your friends are wearing Dusk Sport, and they're on the same channel within the app, that you can communicate with them anywhere. So you hold down three buttons on the audio side. So that's on the tint adjustment side. Opposite side is audio. You hold down those three buttons, and while they're all held down, you can treat it like a walkie-talkie. Hey, I'm going to take my next left. Make sure you follow me. Um, so biking, uh, hiking, whatever it is. That's really, really cool. OK, so run me through the price points and the availability uh, currently. Yeah, so we have these uh, Dusk and Dusk Light. Those are currently on sale. You can find them on ampere.shop. Dusk Light runs for $199. Dusk is $299. And that comes uh, in two colors, that navy and then that black, and then a mirrored, frame, or a mirrored lens and a black lens. And then we have our new Dusk Sport, which will MSRP at $399, but it's currently on sale at $249 during our crowdfunding campaign. And where can people find out more? So ampere.shop, you can always find all of the information about our products. That's A-M-P-E-R-E dot S-H-O-P. And Dusk Sport is currently available on Backerkit, uh, a crowdfunding pl platform that maybe uh, some of your uh, <laughs> viewers have not heard of. Um, but we love working with them, so we're launching this on Backerkit. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chase. Oh, there you go. Okay, so Dusk. Uh, we're at Showstoppers. Whoops. <laughs> um, not a Showstoppers yet. Don't go there yet. Um, so there you go. I thought this was a very interesting way to uh, deal with sunglasses tint. I have never seen something like this uh, before that, uh, I mean, other than transitions, I've never seen an electro electronically controlled uh, tint adjustment for um, sunglasses. And uh, No, that's, that's interesting. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, and then the normal Dusk, like he mentioned, uh, that has been out for a bit, those are still available on uh, Ampere's website. If I can find the sunglasses, here we are. Um, right here, that's the, uh, this is the version with the Bluetooth audio, so you can listen to music, and then the Dusk Light does not have that, so that uh, is missing from the Dusk Light. It feels like the. What do you think the, the uh, What do you think the range would be for conversations? When he said you can tell your buddies to follow me or turn right or turn left. I'm not sure because yeah, I don't okay. know exactly how. It almost sounded it's communicating, like right? when it was pitched to me in the beginning. It's at first sounded like it was like a a thing that was already built in, and then when he kind of pitched it, it almost sounded like it was a thing they hoped to do. Um, oh, okay, okay. So, my guess is that it would use cell service. Is that it would, the phone oh, via Bluetooth oh, would talk yeah, to the yeah, app, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the app would use cell service. Um, if it doesn't do that, then I would assume it's Bluetooth, which would be kind of a small range. Yeah. Unless if it does its own radio, it, unless in the app you change the channel and then it's a radio frequency, and then that could, you know, be pretty far. That could be, um, mm. you know, up and down a mountain type of thing. Um, I, that seemed like a really, really cool feature because I know specifically uh, there are some he uh, helmets that have yes. walkie-talkie capabilities and Bluetooth to your phone capabilities. And that is nice. That is really, really nice to have. And so having that built into some sunglasses, especially sport-focused sunglasses you could use um, while biking and running and that type of thing, uh, it's fantastic. Um, so there you go. So yeah, that's available on Backer Kit. And let's see, they've uh, had 100 and uh, 89 backers. They've gotten $67,000. Only seven days left if you want to back this. So it looks like, let's see where the... What's the going price? Let me go for one. Uh, 250. Two, two fifty. Okay. So that is, uh, the retail price is 400 So you're getting $150 off. 
if you back them, that's, that's a lot off. Uh, in fact, you know, if you think of the glasses that they are selling right now, uh, what were those? Uh, were these, were those two ninety nine? Yeah. Which was, um, I think what there was one ninety nine for the light version and two ninety nine for the heavy version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you get uh, fifty dollars off that um, for the version that has the highest quality um, speaker and a, a, a sensor to tell light. Two ninety nine yeah, versus two forty nine. Yeah, yeah that seems. If this is something that uh, interests you, definitely in the next seven days, I would back this <laughs> so that you can get it. Because uh, uh, I'm not worried that they're not going to be able to make it. They've already made the original. Um, that's pretty cool. Ampere dot shop. If you want to find out about the two gadgets that we just covered. Okay, moving on. Uh, this gadget probably took the category of the weirdest, craziest mm. gadget at CES. I got people who sent me this article. They texted me articles about this gadget. And I was like, <laughs> I got I it. To, I saw I it. To see if you were going to do a demo or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, didn't get to do the demo, uh, yeah. which will be very funny when our viewers understand what this yes. gadget is. Yes. Um, and, you know, I am going to preamble this because I'm not sure if it was explained very well in the interview. This is okay. the Withings U-Scan. And this is a gadget that you pee on in the toilet and it will test your urine. So that is the gadget that we're going to go to next, the Withings U-Scan. We're here at CES Unveiled at Withings, and I am seeing a toilet on the floor here. Morgan, what are we looking at? What is this gadget? You are looking at the world's first hands-free at-home urine lab. Urine lab. Okay, so what type of things are we testing in this urine lab? So maybe you don't know that, but actually urine is an underestimated stream of health data. I mean, a lot goes in, and what comes out, I assume, tells a lot about me. I haven't tested it recently, so I wouldn't know. But So what type of things can we find out from our urine lab? Actually, uh, in urine, you can uh, assess nutritional health. You can assess also uh, menstrual health. Uh, but you can also uh, detect or uh, avoid the relapse of a chronic condition. And so right now at CS, thanks to this urine lab, basically we are launching two consumer cartridges, one focused on nutritional health. So we can detect four key biomarkers. The first one is pH for acid-based balance. And so basically assessing the balance of your protein and vegetable intake. We can also track specific gravity. So it's to know your fluid and water balance. We have also ketones levels for your energy metabolism. And finally, vitamin C levels. That's so interesting. I am definitely all about capturing as much data around my health as possible. Uh, and you specifically mentioned ketones. I know a lot of people are on the keto diet. Is this something you could tell if you're in ketosis or not? Exactly. So for example, having ketones in your urine is not a good sign of health. Right. So it means that actually you are burning too much fat, so your uh, body is reacting too much actually on what's going on. And so what we are providing is basically the balance. So we are not saying you are doing too much or too low, or you should do more and more and more. No, it's all about balance and nutritional balance, because what works for you is not working necessarily for me. I see. So you just give the data to the user and they will deal with it. They'll try to figure out, you know, what's their balance for them, that type of thing? So basically what we are doing is, as I mentioned, balance. And from data, we are also providing actions. So based also on your uh, symptoms, your intake, etc., we are able to provide data correlation and to say, okay, uh, for example, you are at CES. You have been uh, actually uh, visiting a lot at the Unveil, having some drinks. Uh, maybe eat too much burgers and so you are really acidic and you are saying oh I am feeling really tired and we are saying 
remember, last time it was you are you are feeling not really well, but the last time that actually you have eaten spinach, you were in so great shape. So maybe you should do that. But it's all up to you. But we are only over pro providing actions. Uh, and if something like that is going haywire and none of that drinking is happening, maybe you have an issue. So you can ask, talk to your doctor about that. So I want to um, talk about the device itself. So this actually goes into the toilet, and then how uh, how does the replace it like I'm assume you have to replace it, the batteries every once in a while like how does that all work so basically it is uh, made of uh, two parts the first one is the reader so it's a versatile platform thanks to the reader so first you have the reader here then you have the, the urine flowing all around here then there is the collection inlet we have a thermal sensor to detect urine because urine is warm we don't want to detect the flush then we are activating a stream id stream id is low radar frequency so we can differentiate the uh, user uh, in the toilet so for example we don't have want to trigger or measure anytime someone is going to your toilet it's only for you at the proper time then uh, that is shocking to know that just based off of that you can tell who is using the loo at, at the time? That's, that's crazy, because you can do that with the scale. I know that with your scale, you step on, it says, hello, Chad, uh, and then it says, you've you know, gained weight or whatever. So, okay, fantastic. Okay, sorry, go on. No, no, that's right. Actually, everyone has a different pattern for uh, the stream of urine, so that's why, actually, that's why we call it... That is stream. incredible. Stream idea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so then uh, we are launching uh, the, 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 the pump, that is actually pumping the fluid. We have a microfluidic system, and then the urine is brought directly into the cartridge. So in a cartridge, you have dozens of test pods, and in, and in a test pod, you can track up to two biomarkers. We are injecting the urine into the proper test pod because the urine can rotate, and so based on your measurement plan, oh, for example, today, I need to track ketones, and so the, the, the cartridge is rotating like this, injecting the urine there and then we have an optical sensor that is doing all the uh, analysis of the chemical reaction and we are sending the uh, results directly via Wi-Fi to the app the Withings app where you can connect all of your Withings devices so you can have a great snapshot on your health that is absolutely incredible thank you uh, so when uh, when is uh, yeah when is this gonna hit the market so before, if I can go back to the how long does it uh, Yes, absolutely. Last study. So one cartridge is three months of measurements, and then the battery life of the device is three months as well. So when you are replacing the cartridge, you just have to charge it. And so we are launching the product in Europe, uh, the first cartridge, so NutriBalance, end of Q2 2023. And we have a second cartridge that is coming up as well for women. So it's to do some cycle syncing, hormonal based, and also tracking some key uh, nutrients and uh, hydration biomarkers alongside to optimize the cycle. Do you know the price point yet? Totally, so we have a starter kit with the reader and the cartridge for three months uh, at 4 99 And then you can have a monthly subscription at 29 uh, euros. Uh, so we can uh, actually uh, um, send you a new cartridge when it's done automatically. So we, we are removing the mental load for your analysis. Fantastic. Thank you so, so much. Quite interesting. <laughs> Quite interesting. Um, yeah. So... Uh, some things to mention is that it is, uh, you know, it's three months, but you are not getting three months of daily tests. It, sound, it seems like it would be a, like a test once every three days or four days or something like that. Um, so, uh, But you leave it in the toilet all the you, time, right? You leave it in the toilet all the time, yes. And it seems like you're supposed to <laughs> pee right on it, like <laughs> in order for mm -hmm. it to capture the data you gotta right. hit it <laughs> oh she put a target on it exactly it's something yeah. yes yeah um and i still don't quite get how you take it out of the toilet yeah to i charge know it. i don't quite yeah, understand it doesn't how come you... with tongs right <laughs> it needs to it needs yeah, to I know. have another device to touch it, yes, to unscrew exactly. it. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah. And then there's the time you come home and the cleaning lady says, I threw that smelly yeah. thing away <laughs> and put a nice mothball thing in there. Yes, yes. Oh, um, yeah, no. So I lived this long without it. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna get I would it. have to have, I have to see what, 
what markers it's tracking and if I really, really, really want to know. You know, oh, I almost yeah, feel yeah. like this is something that a doctor should prescribe you in a way. Um, yeah. Is, it seems like the absolute, uh, it seems absolutely amazing that you can do a urinalysis at home. Yeah. With a pod. I mean, all of that is just absolutely incredible. But I kind of agree that, is it for everybody? Are the things that they no. track something that I really, really, really want to know? Um, because I like tracking steps and sleep, you know, sleep analysis and all that. But um, you know, what if to, what if you have a roommate? How so do you that know was who's the he? that was the UID. That was the stream ID element of this. The, and I kind of noticed she kind of went over it kind of fast. It. Apparently, it knows every person has a different flow rate. That is the correct way to mention it. Right. And based off of that flow rate, that you will that you will be able to tell who is using. Okay. Blue. Um, and so <laughs> apparently oh, that. So now when you're trying to get a roommate, you'll say. What's your flow rate? Yeah, exactly. Because if you have a flow I, rate of 56, I'm sorry, we're yeah, not going to work yeah, out. Because I'm not, I pay I'm, for this. And yeah, I'm also. I don't, want, <laughs> I don't want your P information. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I'm sure, so, you know, it, it, the how the scale does it is if you're similar to a last weigh-in, uh, it'll oh, just yeah, automatically okay. yeah. do it. And then if you have two people who are about the same weight, it asks you in the app, was this... This person or this person who was yeah. who was uh, did did the test. <clears throat> um, <sighs> I don't think so. Empty pockets. Um, so yeah. So it, it was uh, definitely something that was covered a lot. Lots of people talking about it just because it is just so yeah. weird, just so crazy. Yeah. Also, every press thing I've seen has this. Um, this, it, this is how it's in it where there's a line there's like something keeping it inside of the toilet where the gadget seems to look like it is um is it hung from the front yeah of the it looks toilet? like it's hung from the the front yeah. in all the press photos i've seen but everyone was kind of showing it off as just one device and so i couldn't figure out also like is the battery oh there it is oh uh, they no so, yeah. it's so, that was like I got the drill of fitting in the front of me. I know. Toilet. I can't figure out if is it just stuck there? Is yeah. it hung there? There is a no. bracket, so scooter X. And so I guess you're not sticking this in the Well, you know, three people could chip in and then just divide the ratings among the three of you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I thought yeah. it was like alien tape. You'd be sticking like some alien tape in the bottom <laughs> of your toilet yes. there and keep it there. Um, exactly. Yeah, I'm very confused on how you are supposed to change the battery and stuff. Yeah. Like well, there's the two problems I'm not going to have to deal with. <laughs> so there you go. The with things, I would try it. If I got it, I would try it. Oh, I don't okay. think I'm spending 100 to uh, how much was it? 500 I forgot what it was. $500. Yeah, yeah I don't, I'm not spending that amount of money on it. Uh, no. I would appreciate it if it was a gift, but um, I don't think. Well, it's, now I we know what to get for Christmas. Right. <laughs> we're not having a fundraising uh, campaign next. No, Christmas no, we're definitely not. Definitely not. Um, but yeah, I just don't think that it's uh, for me at that price point. Uh, okay, well, that was the four gadgets from CES. We'll have another four and another four uh, for you in the next two weeks. What we like to do in uh, this month of CES is go back and look at something from the past. So what did we find, Dickie D? Uh, let's see, I sent you a link to the page that it's on. It's exactly five years ago, almost to the day. Dun, 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 that. This okay, guy. Kodak. Okay, okay so uh, uh, before we click the link to see <laughs> if this still exists, Kodak introduced a new 8 millimeter, a new Super 8 camera that, so it uses film, and but it does, it has an LCD screen, and it has a SD card, 
so that you can record sound, but the sound is not on the film. And when I saw it, I, I, I said to the guy, you know, who would want this? <laughs> and he said, there are people like, you know, people want vinyl because they feel the music is more alive on vinyl. There are people who think digital recordings are not as accurate as film. Right. Is there's a warmth to film. There's a life the, yes, to film. A, yes, yes, exactly. And so I asked how much it was, and he said $2,000. And I said, and, and you're making Super 8 cartridges, especially for this? And he said, yes. And I said, and a cartridge is how much? And he said, $100. Just but, for the film. And that's 30 minutes of film? No. It's about three or four minutes of film. Oh, my gosh. Yes, but it includes processing. Oh, oh. So you send the cartridge to them. They send you the developed film. They send you a DVD of the video with the sound matched up. And they, he said also, amateur directors are longing for this product. And this will be a big hit in film courses. Right. Okay? In classes. In classes. All right. So that was five years ago. <laughs> Let's so see. now we're going to see if Let's the see link if those works, poor filmmakers have still been waiting. Or if. There we go. Clicking uh, it. Loading. Then, oh, no. <laughs> All right, all right. So part two. Okay, let's just okay. go to Google and yeah. type in Kodak eight millimeter um, camera. Okay, got that. One yeah, second. yeah. Here we go. D yeah. Okay, so let's look at the results together. We got some old stuff. We got some stuff that's not old it. Oh, stuff. Kodak Super Eight camera. Oh. Let's see, was do we just follow a bad link? Oh, there we go. Wait. Product filmmakers. C mount. Interchangeable. This is it. Latest film technology. Four inch viewfinder. Okay. The oh my. <laughs> the Super Eight Two Thousand Eight oh, yeah. reel. <laughs> Watch our twenty eighteen. You may you may just only have a bad broken link. Sign up for updates. Oh my God. I'm gonna take some time for these updates. In the oh box. My. Scooter X. so funny. They got so Scooter close. X. Can you find a place selling it? Super uh, 8. There's no buy up there, is there? No. It's product no. tour and m more updates. Shot on film, buying a film, develop a film. It looks like it's so... Yeah, it doesn't have a last updated product. Here, let's no. Picture. No. No. Mm. I've not heard a word about it. Oh, I don't know how we so find it. They were just so Crispy close. Bacon. How how is yeah. it that they have all this info? You know what? I think I think it hasn't been updated since 2018. Yeah, I bet I bet that it hasn't. Uh, Crispy Bacon said, "What's the update? How do you how Crispy Bacon? How do you find out when an, uh, the last update of a website?" Is there something uh, to click on? Well, it looks like they haven't given up, but it looks like they haven't made it. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't taken it off the website, at least. No. Email the motion picture codec. You know, just for post. last click updates. It, it, does, it, does a blank come up to I actually... I think it's just the email sign up. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. Email subscription. Oh, okay, yeah. Generic. Okay. Generic, yeah. And so this uh, was Tom's uh, Tom's guide. This is in 2018. They talked about it's it. It's coming this year, it says. Right. Why is Kodak bringing back? The Verge talked about it once again. Is this 2016? I cannot read that. That's too tiny. Yeah, 2016 yes. they talked about yes, it. Yes, because every year they kept saying, coming soon. And in 2018, oh, yes. Originally, they said about five hundred dollars. Yeah, which I just saw go by, and it said four or five hundred. Then, 
Yes, there it is. It will, it will cost me. And then when the guy said 2000, I don't know if I said this earlier. I went back the next day and I said, you know, I, I, I saw this camera yesterday and the guy said, $2,000. That's not possible, is it? And the guy said, oh, no, it's 3000 <laughs> So he was sort of going in the wrong direction. Oh, there we go. 2,500 well, to 3,000. Yeah, that jumped which a is, lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when can you buy it? Sometime this year, according to Kodak. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is their, that website. I was wanting yes, to see there, if. There was, there's a quick thing. It says, how much does film cost? They haven't updated this YouTube channel no. in four years. Okay. That's crazy. Well, folks, I this, think this is, is right dead. up there with the folding. Well, the folding mate is just dead. Yes. And yes. this is, I would say, as good as dead, <laughs> but it's still around. Uh, folding mate, of course, is the loved product that uh, never made it anywhere. Um, and yeah, no, there was no booth. So I did see some people talking in the chat asking if there was a folding mate update. There is no folding mate update. Um, no, they fall. I believe that they announced that they were just closing down. Yes. So in January 2018. Oh no. Um, I think folding mate closed like two years ago. So but that this was is on a their fun Wikipedia ride. page on August 30th, 2021. So yeah, about about two years ago. Uh, they sent an email to customers who had submitted the $85 deposit, informing them that the company has gone bankrupt <laughs> and is requiring customers to submit a form to get their $85 back. The email was titled, Secession of Business Deposit Claim Notice, and began with the line, I hereby inform you that Foldingmate Incorporated ceased its business operations. Customers were required to submit the form by February 1st. Uh, and other information. Yeah, folding me's gone. It's gone. It's folded. It's they the folded. ultimate fold. And the ultimate fold. Golly. It's kind of sad, really. I, I, I hope to get a few more years of content out of uh, yeah. folding mate. <laughs> That's exactly. It's hoping that we could continue to update you on the folding mate process, but. Um, Sad. Very sad. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, we... Uh, oh, my gosh. We could find out what the heck was it. Oh, my gosh. Yes, yes. What the heck yes. is it? Very exciting uh, stuff. And so, you'll be happy to... Well, I'll, I'll let you make your guess and then tell you one person knew. Only one person. One person knew. Wow. So, I have actually no idea what it is. It does okay, look it like again. a... Uh, expecting mother's pump, you know, or not ex or a new mother's breast pump. It looks like breast yes, milk yes. pump. Yes, yes, a lot of breast pump answers. Yes. Um, now, okay, the funny so thing about this I is to... I showed it to Dennis and I said, if I use this, everybody's going to guess in one second. And Dennis said, well, what is it? I said, you don't see what this is? I mean, it looks like a cup. It looks like a some type of cup. Uh, that's kind of where uh, this obviously screws off or something. Yeah. I do feel like it, 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 you know, there's like a vacuum. There's two chambers here. So there's one outer, one inner. I don't get, I don't, I don't know where to go after that. It, yeah. Ju <laughs> just go to the answer. Mostly it's, because it, it is... there's no other, there's no hookup. There's no nothing. There's no nothing. I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, go, go to the picture uh, above where you can still buy it. Oh! It is simply... Oh. Oh my god! It is simply a folding, and it's sort of ridiculous. It says, unfolds and becomes a cup. Well, if it's full of water, <laughs> you're in a big surprise. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get what possible use there is to this unless you're going to go camping and you want to go to a brook and fill a bottle with water. I, uh, I'm not quite sure, but it's still available. Maybe it's you're someone available. who just really 
you know, you, you're just so concerned about using one use disposable bottles and you never know when you're going to need that next bottle. So you can get yeah. this and have it packed away, I guess. I it's, don't know. It seems strange. Okay, well, I know. good. There were some, I assume, hilarious answers. Yes, yes. If you scroll on down, we can. Here, and, we um, here I make this a uh, bit bigger here. Yeah. There we go. Um, there we go. Cone of silence, water bottle protector. A lot of cone of silence, if you That's remember what that was. Yeah. Portable eye wash station. A wine beverage chiller. That could almost be. This is good. Having a glass of wine when an earthquake hits. Never spill a drop. <laughs> the magic mini mocha maker. Oh, yeah. um, this is very good. Drink a drink cup with difficult access to discourage overconsumption of tempting beverages. Yeah. There you go. Playtex Nursa. Double world insulated cup. Uh, infusion water bottle. Insulated wine tumbler. Could be an adult sippy cup. <laughs> I thought this this was kind of funny. An egg de sheller. That looks a like it. Boiled egg. Yeah, doesn't it? It put does. Put a hot boiled egg in, spin it around. It would be more like shake it up and down, and the eggshell will come off. And That's and so, so we we picked more like instead of twelve, we picked fifteen winners since one person totally got it, and another person got something that was close enough. And so but that now, really shows you never know. I assume somebody knew what that was, but it really goes to show you never know when other people don't know what the gadget is. You should, no. if you do know what it is, you should guess. You're absolutely what it is. right. You're absolutely right. Oh my gosh. And this is the next gadget? This is the next gadget. This is the January, February. Oh my. Okay. Gadget. Oh, well, I uh, hate to give it away uh -oh. this early. He's get, yeah, get it but, right uh, off the top. Yeah, right. It's a, uh, this is a replacement pigtail if uh, your pig ever got amputated. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, it's so close. Sorry to give that more one. Than, I can't say more than that. <laughs> give that one away right there at the beginning. <laughs> uh, but if you think you know what this is, get a guessing, because chances are people don't know what it is, especially based on yeah, the last Yeah, you're gadget. right. Yes. So uh, head on over to gizwiz.biz, find the What the Heck Is It game, and play along. Uh, also, there at gizwiz.biz, that's where you can find articles about all the gadgets that we talk about on the show. So, head on over there and um, learn about the gadgets that we talk about. Gizwiz.tv is where we are live just about every Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern Time. I don't think we're going to have any uh, issues. I don't think we have any conflict, scheduling conflicts in the next... Uh, okay, good. You, I'm free. I'm long good. time. So head on over there, gizwiz.tv, uh, Thursdays, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern Time, to watch the show, join the chat room, and chat along with all the fantastic folks that are there. And if you miss a show, we have it available on our website, on YouTube, or on Apple Podcasts. We also have an RSS feed, so you can add it to any podcatcher that you want. Uh, thanks so much uh, for sticking with us. A uh, big thank you to our patrons. Huge thank you to our patrons. Also, huge thank you to uh, all the people who donated and helped support the CES fundraiser that allowed me to go to Vegas. So thank you guys so much once again. Um, if you're our patrons this month, man, I'm sorry. We just let y'all out in the cold. We didn't give you a crappy corner theme to vote on. So next month, we'll, <laughs> that'll return. I uh, hope you forgive us. Uh, we really, really appreciate your continued support of the Patreon. And if you want to give via PayPal, you can do so at our website, gizwiz.tv. Click on the Patreon tab, and there's a PayPal link there so you can donate. However you donate, thank you. Seriously, thank you yes, so much. Yes, yes, That about wraps it up for our show this week. We'll see you next week. I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs>